Len Sassman is the only cypherpunk to go MIA virtually the whole month of January 2009 while Bitcoin was being mined and Hal Finney received the first transaction. Let's do an analysis and look at Satoshi's timeline versus, ha versus Len's timeline below. All right, so here's what happened. So January 3rd, Satoshi mined the Genesis block. So there was a gap now. A lot of people were speculating why. From the 4th to the 8th, there was no mining activity. So it was a five-day pause in the mining activity. So a lot of people are like, let's do some research on this and see if, it, you know, what happened. Like, is there anybody else that was maybe active or inactive those days? Let's see if any cypherpunks were at conferences. Let's try to match some timelines. So somebody gave me the idea to look into Len Sassaman because Len Sassman was only active two days that whole month of January. So was he online or offline the same time? Let's find out, guys. So January 2nd, before the mine, before the Genesis block was mined, um, he sent out a vulnerability email for MD5. I don't know whatever that means. I don't know. So there was no public posts, comments, or commits or appearances from the 3rd to the 6th when it was being mined. January 7th, he sent out a, code, a CodeCon... 20, 2009 call for presentations. <laughs> Damn, I'm so excited I'm having hiccups. <laughs> so it was like, it, was, it wasn't an event. It was just like a message of everybody sending their presentations for CodeCon 2009 in April. So January 8th to the 9th, there was no known activity. So he was only two days online, just making a message, just sending out an email. So that's suspicious. So here's where it lines up like Satoshi versus Len. So January 2nd, I guess Satoshi was preparing the network. Len just sent out an email. The third, he was completely silent while Satoshi mined the Genesis block. Mining was paused from the 4th to the 8th. He was also silent. However, when it resumed, he was, he well, the 7th, he sent out a, a call for presentations. That, now, here's where it gets kind of crazy. The 9th, when the mining resumed, he was completely silent. So, he was actually silent after that the whole month of January. So he was the only cypherpunk silent that whole month, you know, from the 10th to 31st when Bitcoin was being mined, tested, sent to Hal Finney. Like all these other crypto guys, uh, cypherpunks were like, you know, online, active, participated. He was the only one vanished. That's very strange. Very strange. So recap. The 10th to the 31st, there was no no known, no known whereabouts, no posts. Halfini joined the network, I think, in January 10th. Um, Bitcoin expands, Satoshi's active, Len is silent. For three full weeks. That's very strange. So somebody told me to look into this and try to match the timelines because there was a gap, like I said, from the 4th to the 8th in Bitcoin mining, and everybody was like, why there was a gap? So they were like, you know, let's let's try to search, let's try to see if anybody else was silent or active or in conferences that time period. So here's where we're going to compare now Satoshi's disappearance to Len's death now. This is pretty, pretty crazy. So his last post was December 12th, 2010. His last email was April 26, 2011, and Len died by suicide July 3rd, 2011. So not even three months after Satoshi's last email, Len went bye-bye. It's kind of crazy. Wow. I just researched this today. I figured I'd, I'd post this video. If anybody got any counter arguments for or against, I'm open to it. Let's talk about this. Let's see what happened. Let's see if I'm going to also deep dive into some more stuff like after January. So, all right. <clears throat> Thanks everybody for watching. I'm back from vacation. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.